Bye bye Microsoft Syntex. Hello SharePoint Premium. And the reason I am so interested in this is because if you've been following all my videos, you know that I've done two on Microsoft Syntex. One was an introduction and the other one was how to leverage Power Automate to boost your Microsoft Syntex. And I did all of these back in October of 2022. Plus, I am a heavy user from a personal side for Microsoft Syntex. Anytime I travel, especially when I get all of those receipts, I pull out my phone, I use the OneDrive app, scan all my receipts, they directly go to my SharePoint site, and SharePoint Syntex immediately takes effect of all of my receipts. So I personally invested in Microsoft Syntex. So when I started seeing rumors about these, especially during the Ignite time, I made sure I attended this session, got the first-hand information, and now I'm gonna give you a full overview of that. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So before we deep dive into this transition from Microsoft Syntex, I want you to watch this 40 second clip. And here, Jeff Tieper himself is talking at that session that I attended, which was at Ignite, and he's talking about this transition that is going to happen from Microsoft Syntex to SharePoint Premier. Let's take a look. And we did that under the brand of Microsoft Syntex. And we've had great adoption of Syntex over the last year. We've released some services. Some are still in preview that people are trying out. We've gotten great feedback. But... You know, I love my colleague Jared Spataro's comments yesterday about Copilot. Occasionally, we have a great experience, but maybe we could go back and streamline the branding a little bit. And so people love the concept. They weren't sure about the connections between Syntex and SharePoint. So we decided to simplify all that and rename Syntex to SharePoint Premium. So before we jump in, I actually want to walk down the memory lane and talk a little bit about the syntax. Now, I have covered this in my introduction video, but we can spend a few minutes talking over here as well. So the evolution of SharePoint syntax was actually started back in November 4th of 2019. And the initial name actually came in as Project Cortex. And here's actually an article which was posted, was posted by Seth Patton. Here's the link to the actual TechNet community document. I've put that link in the description below. And that's where the announcement of Project Cortex was done. And if you actually read the text over here, it will actually make sense that, hey, this actually does sound a lot like Microsoft Syntex. And that's what it is. This was the original birth of Microsoft Syntex, initially called as Project Cortex. Now, if we fast forward and we now go to September of 2020, that was the announcement of SharePoint Syntax, which is kind of funny, right? It was originally was SharePoint Syntax, uh, but this announcement was met again by Seth Patton uh, back in September of 2020. And again, everything else is pretty much the same, all the evolution about the AI auto generation to go ahead and get all your information uh, from your documents, perfect. All of that was still the same. Now, when we fast forward, Back in Ignite of 2022, which is in October, Chris McNulty made the official announcement that it's no longer SharePoint Syntax, but it's now going to be Microsoft Syntax, content AI in the flow of your work. And this was in October of 2022, which is also when the official logo of Syntex was debuted. In fact, I actually have a pin of one of those. I'm really proud about that. And over there, same thing. Jeff Tieper in Ignite made the official announcement of Microsoft Syntex. So I like it because the entire circle has completed and this is basically what the evolution is so far. Back in 2019 of November, it was Project Cortex. Then it evolved into SharePoint Syntax, became Syntax, and guess what? Now it is back, the circle is complete. It is called as SharePoint Premium. Now remember, in the heart of all of this is SharePoint and it is a type of service that can handle 300 million monthly active users. In addition, it also has 2 billion 2 billion new documents that are uploaded per day. These were very important stats that Jeff Tieper shared just to make sure that you understand and resonate how important SharePoint is to handle your content. But it's more than that. SharePoint is the main foundation of so many other 365 services that really depend on SharePoint. And so this was my favorite slide deck that actually does resonate that is that the importance of SharePoint as a heart and the foundation of so many of these services. But 
it's not just SharePoint. It also goes ahead and improves your entire OneDrive experience. So they actually talked about that as well. He covered a little bit of how your overall OneDrive experience is going to improve as well from so many different levels. So it's important to understand that SharePoint Premium is not just a renaming of Microsoft Syntax, because now it's gonna bring so many more of these features along with the whole new premium concept. And so it's nice that they broke that down into three different categories. It's experiences, processes, and governance. So let's take a look at each of this just a little bit more in detail. The first thing is the experiences. And when we talked about the experience, it was pretty neat because it started off by talking about even improving the entire user experience by providing a whole bunch of these templates. Uh, my favorite one was this one about AI in the sky. I mean, these sites, they don't even look like they are SharePoint sites. They have such beautiful designs. And there were so many other features that Jeff was talking about with some of them he personally loved. But one of the important things was the experience pieces over there. So it was interesting to see how we had Sesha focus on the experiences. And I love the demo that he went through. He actually went through this high value content solution, basically from an end to end type of a demo. So, so one of the things he's talked about was basically this entire process of agreements. Uh, and he said that this is all happening inside Teams. And in quick passing, he talked about this new agreements app inside Teams. Now, I don't know if this is just a demo way that he was talking about, or there actually is an agreements app or something that is gonna be coming out of agreements app. So I'm gonna pay a little extra attention to if that's a feature that's coming out in Teams. Keep your eye out on that as well. But if you look on the left, you can see that the agreements app has the Microsoft Syntax logo. And it goes through a different process. Basically, in your home screen, you are able to see all of these agreements that are there, the different processes, the insights. In addition, you can go and see what are your existing agreements, the statuses of it, supplier, basically a really good SharePoint list. But now you can go ahead and create your agreement over there, which in the example that he gave was a statement of work. Once the statement of work was actually started, you went ahead and filled out this very specific form, which had some fields into it. After the fields was completed, a statement of work document was automatically populated with, in this case, over 20 fields, all thanks to the Microsoft syntax. And all of this you can basically verify. Once it is completed, you go ahead and start your approvals. This is the same approvals that we use in SharePoint. And look, all of this documentation and everything for the statement of work is automatically done. After that, once you start the approvals, it goes through an approval process, which there is the power of Power Platforms, Power Automate. And we've seen something like this anyway from the approvals. Colin, in this case, is the one who has to go and approve. So if he goes and approves it, uh, he will basically be able to go and even put in some text. But, but in some case, on the right side, you could see some deviation or some other suggestions in the contract, which Collins may have put in, but in this case, Mona finds something. So this, again, is the whole power of AI into the syntax approvals, which is now part of the entire SharePoint Premium. So you can go through this approvals process. If everything is good, go ahead and click send. And then after that, you can do your own electronic signature. And this was a very important piece. The electronic signature is now built directly into the SharePoint Premium, and it is completely browser-based, which means you don't have to add any additional add-ons or any add-ons or anything like that. The electronic signature is directly built in. However, a key thing that Sasha did point out that if your company is already using things such as Adobe Acrobat Signature or DocuSign, then those two will also be allowed to put in their own plugins, for lack of a better term, uh, so that you don't have to just use this out of the box one that comes with SharePoint Premium, you can use those two as well. So it was very important that he pointed that out. But overall, these are all the experiences that are gonna be part of the SharePoint Premium from a content standpoint. Next, it is all about SharePoint Premium processes. And for that, Jeff Teeper went ahead and invited Kristen, and Kristen gave us a good walkthrough on all of that. So the key things that caught my attention was the concept of autofill columns. And she was going through this whole process of a product catalog where you have a bunch of these documentations. And thanks to the autofill columns, it will automatically go and say, hey, which one of these documents are considered ready, not ready. It goes through all that assessment thanks to AI. Now, you also have the flexibility to go and put in your details for that autofill. And you can go and put in some, in some AI generated content over there as well and basically say if you want to apply to all files or anything new, you've got the options to go and put these conditions. And then based on that, moment you put that in, it will go ahead and scan through all the files. 
So in this example that was done, there was 2,183, over 2,000 files that were completely processed. Details about that was done. That's where the AI does its magic. And then in addition to that, you use the existing services that are there. So in this case, it uses the SharePoint term set. So for all of you who are, who are SharePoint site admins, you know the concept of term sets. So if you've got existing sites which have these term sets, you can start levering all of these term sets to start tagging different types of taxonomy directly into it. In addition, you can use your managed data to go and now even start tagging, okay, based on the documents, which of them are of the specific type products. And then finally, use content query. By using the content query, you can go ahead and put in certain of these criteria, And then based upon that, it will be able to even tell you what was the pricing models for that. And if any of these documents now have been reassessed. It was really neat to actually see this demo because that does take existing work that you've put in, things such as your taxonomy, and then leverage the AI to really boost your existing documents. I was pretty impressed about all of this. I actually do urge you to go and watch the video so you can actually see from end to end the full demo that she did. And last, but definitely not the least, it was about the governance. And it was really nice to go and actually see Chris McNulty give a full demonstration on all of these new features that were coming out. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through step by step, but I do wanna go and point out the important ones. Uh, the important thing was about Copilot directly, not just in SharePoint, but in the SharePoint Admin Center. Now you might have those admins who are either fairly new or new to this space of the SharePoint site. So Copilot can actually help you answer some of these things and even start using some of these new data access governance features that are allowed. Because you might have seasoned SharePoint admins, but all of these things are new. Your Copilot can help you figure out how to use all of these things. Next, the content governance actually comes with a whole bunch of powerful tools that you can use to improve your content lifecycle protection and the storage. So let's actually take a look at each of these ones. Uh, first things over here was to basically go and start using the AI powered policy recommendations. And these policy recommendations will use your existing things such as your sensitivity label and can go at different levels. So some of the examples that was given over here is that you can actually apply policies to find out, hey, which of those are your inactive sites? Because once you find that, you can start leveraging the Microsoft 365 archive. This is a tiered storage to manage cost and inactive content because we know, you and I firsthand know that how SharePoint being the content, it can grow and historical content which is sitting over here can start to get expensive. So moment these sites start to reach end of life, go ahead and identify it using the report that I just showed you and then take them away from your active sites and put them into your archive locations. And this is pretty neat because after you've completed the archive stage, you can also take that content and go ahead and put that into the M365 backup. This gives you the ability to backup. This gives you the ability to backup and restore OneDrive, SharePoint, and Exchange. So the process is pretty simple. You can go ahead and pick any of your SharePoint sites over there based on any of the scope that you've put in, any of the search criteria that you've done, select what those sites are, and the moment you complete it, the M365 backup will be successfully done for that OneDrive or for the Exchange or for the SharePoint, and you have the full flexibility to go ahead and restore it. You can restore it to replace any of these existing sites or mailboxes that you may have or even create new ones. All of these can be done either in bulk or you can select it side by side. This process that is there is actually 20 times faster than any of the legacy ways that you might be doing it. And Microsoft has also taken initiative to plan for that backup architecture because let's face it, you might already have either one of these third party companies that you're working with so you can continue to leverage them and use their architecture services to directly plug into your Microsoft 365. So any existing process that you may already have to do that, you don't have to change it. It now just directly gets implemented in the overall Microsoft 365 backup because they are integrating with all of these partners. So it was pretty interesting to actually see Chris McNulty walk us through each of these content governance features that are coming out of the SharePoint Premium. And from a personal standpoint, this was my favorite. So in closing, here are my thoughts. As an existing Microsoft Syntex user, I need to know how much work is gonna be done automatically or how much manual effort will be required by me to go into the transition to SharePoint Premium. Uh, because like I said, some of the things I had to do myself, I had to leverage Power Automate to go and do some notifications and go and do some assessment. 
Granted, Microsoft Syntex did most of it. Uh, so how much of that is going to be automated in the future, which will save me some work? And then all my existing content, when it automatically becomes Microsoft Premium, is anything going to break? Does anything need to be tweaked? I'm very curious to see how all that is going to work. So I'm more of the cautiously optimistic side. Uh, and like I said, this is all going to be a journey. This was just announced only a few days ago. Uh, so we will have to wait and see when all of these actually come out. Are any of them going to go directly GA or preview or private preview? We will just have to wait and see. So hopefully this just gave you an overview of these new releases that has come out, especially the transition over from Microsoft Syntax to SharePoint Premium. I do urge you to go and watch that entire video uh, because it has been recorded. So you can actually go and watch the whole thing. I've just given you a small snippet of that, but hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.